Hello everyone, and welcome to part 2 of the FFR SC1 AA arm suspension and steering speed modeling series. For those of you who have not yet seen the first part, I'd highly recommend watching it first since it will give you some more information about this project, and you'll get to see the progress that I've made up to this point. I'll be sure to leave a link to that video below in the description. I'm going to continue where I left off in the previous video, where in it I completed the basic design of the front suspension. With that progress made, I began working on the steering. I often find the steering system to be one of the more difficult parts of the design. A typical steering setup found in just about any RC vehicle usually contains quite a few moving parts, and is almost always operated using a servo with some kind of arm attached to it, as will be the case with this vehicle. Because of this, it's usually quite difficult to make a very compact and scale-realistic appearing steering system. Having a small rack and pinion setup that I could simply mount somewhere in front of the lower control arms would be awesome, though beyond the challenge of just building a functioning rack and pinion so small, I'm sure it would come with its own set of compromises and shortcomings. Instead, I sketched out a few different ideas on the paper and brainstormed a couple of different ways that I could go about the design. I came up with a number of configurations that I thought had some potential and decided to start with this one that I'm designing here, which basically positions the steering arms and center link out in front of the motor. Although I wasn't sure how good this design would turn out to be or if it was the very best one that I could come up with, I really wanted to dive into the CAD modeling and start seeing how things would look. Although for most projects, I always like to start out with some rough sketches before entering a CAD environment, I don't like to spend too long with just pencil and paper, and instead I like to begin to do some basic modeling once I've gotten what I believe to be some solid design ideas. Depending on the complexity of what I'm designing, such as whether or not it has to be built around an existing object, or added as a part of an assembly, it can be difficult to take everything into account when just simply making some rough sketches. So I like to start modeling as soon as I've got some good ideas, and if I find that whatever I have in mind isn't working, I can always go back to brainstorming some new ideas. What I'm working on here is the top part of the steering arms. Specifically, I'm working on the arm that the rod coming from the steering servo will connect to. This setup does place the arm fairly high up, since the arm the servo rod connects to needs to be high enough so that it clears the suspension, and I also need to make sure that the rod will not come into contact with the tire or motor. To try to keep things simple and relatively fast paced, I'm mostly just eyeballing the position of a lot of the components and checking for potential issues every now and then. Depending on how the initial prototypes turn out, I can always come back to this design and make changes wherever necessary. One thing I am keeping in mind is that I want to keep everything as compact and close to the front of the chassis as possible. If this assembly sticks out too far, it will reduce the number of bodies that this setup can be used with. As I mentioned in the previous video, I am designing all of the components for the suspension and steering setup to be compatible with the large RF-130CH motor, since if it can accommodate this motor, it can also accommodate smaller motors as well. Here I'm working on the bottom mounting piece which will support the steering assembly and will provide a place for all of the parts to mount to.
I changed the appearance of the steering arms and the base piece. My plan is to have a 2mm steel rod in the center of the steering arms for them to pivot around. I now need to start working on a top support piece that will keep the arms from sliding up as well as prevent the arms from wobbling. Coming up with the way I wanted to mount this upper support piece to the base was something that I was thinking about since the initial sketch. I wanted the way that it mounts to be solid, but I also wanted it to be as open as possible to allow wires to easily pass through it if needed. The overall rigidity of these parts is something that I'll be taking note of when building some prototypes. If I feel that the supports need to be stronger, I'll adjust the design accordingly. Also like with some of the components for the front suspension, I wanted to try to design some of the steering components in a way that would hopefully allow them to be printable on an FDM printer. Again, it's difficult with parts this small and with fine details, but it's something that I wanted to try to do. Another thing I needed to keep in mind while modeling was the connectors for the wires on the motor. They are not modeled into this mock-up motor, but they do extend out several millimeters, so I need to take them and the wires connecting to them into account. It's definitely going to be tight, but there should be enough room for everything to fit. On the front, I wanted to add some screw holes, which would allow the ability for something to be easily mounted, such as an electronic component or a radiator. I ended up deciding to remove some more material from the upper support around where the motor connectors will be to allow more room for the wires. I finished the design of these components by making sure that there would be enough tolerance to allow a 2mm rod to be inserted for each steering arm, and I also made sure that the screw holes were all at the correct depth. Next I moved on to adding some ball joints, which I'm making sure are the correct size so that I can use pre-existing sockets and tie rods with this design. One of my concerns was that the upper arm that connects to the servo might come into contact with the wheel. I want this arm to be long enough to provide plenty of leverage, but not too long to where it might interfere with other parts. 
I did a quick mock-up to get a rough idea of how much room there would be around the arm. Although a larger wheel could get quite close to making contact with the arm, under normal circumstances there shouldn't be any risk of collision since the wheels would have to be very large and turn at a sharp angle, in addition the track width would have to be very narrow or the wheels would have to have a ton of backspacing. Next I began working on adding a steering arm to the knuckle. I then added a ball joint to the end of the center link. The position of each ball joint on the center link and steering knuckle is something that I'll probably be adjusting later on in the future in order to fine tune the steering angle. For now the current setup will be good enough for testing. I did add some material to the center of the center link to help increase its rigidity. At this point, I felt that the steering components were at a stage where I was ready to start building some initial prototypes, and from there I could begin to further refine the design. I wanted to do a little more work to the suspension mount piece that I designed in the previous video. For now I decided to simply mount it using two screw holes in the center. I might modify this mount to use four holes or make a separate variation that uses four, however I wanted to start with this just using two for easier printing. I also wanted to bevel a few of the edges. To try and make this part as easy to print on an FDM printer as possible, I decided to split it into two pieces which can be glued together. I then made some sections for guide pins to be inserted which will help with aligning the two parts.
Finally, I mirrored all the parts and did a few quick checks to make sure everything should function properly and to get a rough idea of the steering geometry. I'm currently in the process of doing some test printing and beginning to build some functioning prototypes, which I will be showcasing in the next part of this series. But that is all for this video, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.